Hi, this video is about problem 4.1.21s in the 6th edition of Mathematics of Investment and Credit by Samuel Broberman. It's the first problem in chapter 4, the first problem on bonds that is an old actuarial exam problem as indicated by the S. We're going to be finding the price of a bond when we are given various kinds of information in relation to another bond. There really is no better way to describe this problem. It's a lot of miscellaneous information. It's a long problem with lots of information here. It's kind of information overload, and because of that, I think it would probably be a difficult problem for most people to encounter on the test. You've got two bonds. Bond X is an annual bond with semi-annual coupons, so there would be two N coupons, while bond Y is a zero coupon bond, no coupons. It's redeemable in N over two years. Uh, note there's, well, as you look through there here, the redemption value is not necessarily the same as the par value or face value. The desired yield rate is the same for both bonds. You also have more information for bond X. The par value is 1,000, same as the face value. The ratio of the semi-annual bond rate, call it R, to the desired semi-annual yield rate, call it I. R over I is 1.03125. For um. The present value, not of the entire income stream, just the redemption value is 381.5. For bond Y, the redemption value is the same as bond X. The price to yield is 647.8. When I first saw this phrase here, price to yield, my initial reaction was to think that was price divided by yield. But no, actually it doesn't mean that. It means the present value, the price of the uh, redemption value at the given yield rate is 647.8. That's for bond Y. The goal is to solve for the price of bond X, would be, which would be the present value of all the coupons plus the redemption value for bond X. So yeah, there's a lot of information in this problem. It's easy to get confused about what to try. I think probably the best strategy here is to go ahead and write down your general equation for the price of a bond with coupons and think based on that equation, what do you need to know what do you need to find to be able to plug the numbers into that equation? So the price of bond X, I won't even bother draw, drawing a number line here, would be the present value of all the coupons. What are the coupon amounts? It would be the face value of 1,000 times the semi-annual coupon rate, R. That would be the amount of each coupon. There's two N of them. It's an N year bond with semi-annual coupons, so we multiply by A2N with the given yield rate, I is a semi-annual, effective semi-annual yield rate. We also would have the present value of the redemption value. Redemption amount, let's call it C. Again, that's not necessarily a thousand. Gets multiplied by V sub I raised to the 2N power. Once again, it's an N-year bond with semi-annual coupons, so we have 2N half-year periods. Okay, so if we could find the things to plug into this equation, that would help us finish the problem. I think one good thing to notice here, when you see that you have R over I, think about the fact that the formula for this present value right there of an annuity immediate involves dividing by I, and therefore it's, we're going to be able to make use of that here. This is 1 minus VI to the 2N divided by I, and therefore I can bring that I below the R, and replace R over I with 1.03125, multiply by 1,000, you get 1,031.25 uh, times 1 minus V to the 2N. With this term, um, we don't need to do anything fancy there. That, again, is the um, present value of the redemption value for bond X. This thing right here is 381.5. So it looks like all that's left to do is find VI to the 2N, meaning you could find I and N and, and find VI to the 2N, or perhaps maybe we can just find V to the N and square it to get V to the 2N. It's all of a sudden this problem seems not so scary anymore. Uh, we probably do need to use the rest of the information here. Uh, for bond Y, again, the price to yield is 647.8. That's the present value of the future redemption amount, 647.8. The redemption amount for bond Y is the same as for bond X. Um, that's part A of the information for bond Y. It's also C. It's redeemable in N over two years. 
which means n half years. So it would be multiplied by vi to the n. All right, so let's see, that could get, um, well, we could use the fact, one more fact here, that once again, well, we are, use a fact we've already used, use the fact that this was equal to that. 381.5 was equal to c over v, c times vi to the 2n. I can now divide the bottom equation by the top equation. The c's would cancel, and I'd be left with vi to the n is 381.5 divided by 647.8. I'm dividing the second equation by the first one. What does this come out to be? 381.5 divide by 647.8. That's 0 0.5889. 1633. Um, I'm almost done. All I have to do is square that. Subtract from 1, multiply by 1031.25, and then add 381.5, and I'll be done. Square this to get vi to the 2n, that value right there. Subtract that from 1, multiply by 1031.25, and then add 381.5. The final answer is about 1055. And using all the decimals that we used, it would be 1055.09. Okay? So in reality, even though it looks like a really hard problem that might take a long time, it's not too bad if you think about this equation right away. Um, but it's definitely easy to get scared off by such a problem and sort of go in circles. It's definitely, I think, in general, a, a difficult problem for people.